I'm standing here in front of a Defender TD5 with a well-known problem, a winding fuel pump. And I guess we all know that sound. Anyhow, um, in this video, I'm going to try to explain you how the fuel system has been put together, how it operates, how you can diagnose a winding fuel pump problem, and how you actually can troubleshoot and find out the root cause of that issue. Because in many cases, the fuel pump is not the issue. This specific Defender has the fuel pump in there for about 10,000 kilometers. So really, it cannot be a fuel pump problem. The Defender TD5 does not have a standard diesel injection pump. Instead, it has an electrical pump consisting of two stages, a low pressure stage and a high pressure stage. And it's always turned on as soon as the ignition key is in position number two or the engine is running. The fuel pump is mounted inside the gas tank, near the rear cross member. The fuel pump forwards fuel towards the fuel filter, which is to be found at the right rear wheel arch and it's mounted on the chassis. The cylinder head is fitted with five injectors and has an internal fuel channel, which is feeding the individual injectors. At the end of the cylinder head, you will find a pressure regulator. And at the end, the fuel has to be cooled down by a fuel cooler to be found on the intake of the engine. Fuel has been sucked out of the gas tank through the yellow filters inside the fuel pump. The low pressure pump number seven is then forwarding the fuel towards the fuel filter. If there is any air in the fuel filter, then this air will be bleeded out through the top of the filter and being returned to the fuel pump as indicated by the gray line. Once the fuel filter is filled up with fuel, fuel is returned back towards the fuel pump. That fuel is still at a low pressure at 0.7 bar and is the feed for the high pressure pump. The dark green identifies the return towards the fuel pump. Number 9 is the high pressure pump and pressurizes the fuel before it's been forwarded towards the engine bay. The high pressure fuel, which is around 4 bar, arrives at the pressure regulator which is feeding the high pressure fuel through a cavity into the cylinder head. The internal fuel channel in the cylinder head is distributing the fuel amongst the injectors. How much fuel is consumed by the injectors depends on the demand of power from the engine. The demand of power has been controlled by the ECU. If there's a lot of demand, then the injectors are consuming a lot of fuel. If there's no demand, then the injectors consume almost no fuel. And as a consequence, the pressure can vary inside the embedded fuel channel. To compensate for that one, there is a return lead. The return lead is providing the fuel back to the pressure regulator where the pressure regulator will reduce or enlarge the cavity on the return. And as such, can, it can regulate the pressure at the inside in the internal fuel channel. As the fuel has been flowing through the cylinder head and has been heated up, it requires to be cooled down by the fuel cooler before it's been returned to the fuel filter and has been cycled back into the system. Uh, there's many uh, components inside the fuel system uh, where things could go wrong. The first one to look at and the most easy one is actually the fuel filter. Make sure you have a clean filter mounted inside and that there is no water inside the filter. Uh, if you do have water inside the fuel then you will see an arm light coming up on the dashboard. At the bottom of the fuel filter you will find the water sensor. Now at the fuel filter on top of it there is what we call the bleeding valve. And that's kind of a kind of a reduction. Uh, it's a piece of plastic with a very small hole in the middle, which is letting the air through, but not the fuel or a little bit of fuel. So that could be having a problem. So that would be the first part I would inspect and change if necessary. There is a second kind of valve on the other side uh, at the back of the uh, the connection of the fuel filter that one you might want to check as well you can get those both parts from most Land Rover uh, part suppliers 
Now let's assume now that the filter is okay and that you have checked all the hoses, that they are don't leak. Now make sure when you do connect or disconnect the hose that the inner sleeve is not detached from the outer sleeve. If it is, then you have to remove uh, or replace that uh, tube. Now the fuel pump itself, it's not easy to get at. It's fitted inside the gas tank. So you will have to remove the gas tank uh, to get access to it. Now inside the fuel pump, you will find on the bottom number eight filters. It could very well be that those filters are actually filled up or clogged up with debris. Um, so you would have to clean that. Now, if that's the case, then you also will have to rinse the tank out because that means the debris and uh, pollution is inside the tank. Um, you also notice that you have kind of like a small little pot at the bottom of the uh, fuel pump. Now that's what we call the swirl and that's there to make sure that there is always fuel towards the fuel pump if you go up the hill and down the hill or steep angles. Now to make sure that it happens, uh, there is what we call a float that would block off or not uh, fuel going into the uh, swirl um, and that you can't see on the picture but that float you would have to check as well and for the rest i don't assume there's much more you can do on the fuel pump uh, besides checking the pressures as we said so the low pressure feed which is coming out of the pump into the filter is about 0.7 bar and the high pressure uh, feed towards the engine base is about um, four bar so you have the mean if you have the means to measure the pressure then by all means do so so now the next uh, area of interest is the cylinder head. As I said, the cylinder head has five injectors and every injector is mounted into the cylinder head. The cylinder head has an embedded fuel channel and through a little hole on the side of the injector, fuel is getting into the injector. How much fuel gets in there is determined by the ECU. And now let's assume that the ECU doesn't have a problem. Uh, so the injector would be working properly. However, at the bottom of the injector, um, between the cylinder and the injector nozzle, there is a copper seal. And it wouldn't be that abnormal that the copper seal is gone. So you could get uh, pressure from the pistons uh, cylinder into the uh, fuel channel if that uh, was leaking. Uh, there's also an oil seal at the top of an o-ring at the top of the injector uh, to seal off some oil channels from the fuel channel. Uh, if you get a fuel, diesel fuel inside your oil, then that's certainly a sign that you need to change all the washers and the o-rings on all the injectors. Now the pressure regulator itself um, could go wrong as well. Uh, so it may be that it's uh, causing the wrong pressure. Um, so for that one, you would actually have to check that the vacuum mechanism is working properly. Um, so, uh, but in most cases, uh, you would just have to replace that one. A typical symptom for a faulty pressure regulator would be uh, a very rough running idle engine. Uh, that could be an indication on the condition that you have uh, no deteriorated washers and seals on the injectors. Um, another point could be that the um, fuel cooler is actually leaking so you could get either diesel into the water cooling system or the other way around so check for that as well if you keep having water in your fuel uh, and you keep having water alarms and you're sure that the tank does not have any contamination in it then that might very well be an issue uh, with the fuel cooler which is leaking coolant into your diesel or the other way around is also possible. So these are the areas I would be looking at and it's not that hard to do. Um, you may have to build some homemade tools to measure the pressure, but it's certainly well while doing it before you start actually replacing uh, the fuel pump. Now on the other hand, of course, the fuel pump could be really uh, faulty. Now if you do replace it, be attention, there's two models for that one. There's the model for the 90 and there's the model for the 110.